If your holiday season has been anything like the Doctor's this year, it's been action-packed, full of thrills and spills, and a bit of a tearjerker. Oh, I feel quite emotional. So... A bit like my own Christmas, to be honest. I'm just glad I didn't have the Cybermen or Daleks knocking on the door. I don't even know who I am. I'm sure you'll agree this Christmas episode has been a cracker. And with the help of the Doctor Who cast and crew, we open it up with a bang to see what surprises drop out. I promise you won't find any bad jokes. So sit back and enjoy your special Christmas present. It's going to be a cracker! <laughs> Christmas, a time for peace, love and a tasty family meal with your loved ones. So relaxing. But what's it like spending the festive season with the Oswalds? Tense. It's a bit tense. Very tense. Mm. She's a bit too like a grandmother, I think. Very I like say. a grandmother. Mm. We've got a very close bond. I think she wraps me around a little finger a bit, you know. Well, she's so gorgeous, of course she would. Well, OK, sounds like the usual family Christmas. And the similarities don't stop there for Jenna. There's similarities wow. with my gran, you know. Really? Yeah. Cool. Apart from my gran probably has better taste than Clara's gran in clothes, because if I say that, my grandma will get quite upset because my grandma's oh, yeah. well fashionable. Your gran's going to, yeah. Hi, Jenna's gran. Hi, gran. But I hear Clara's gran has a few surprises in her past. Sheila has encountered the Doctor before, back in the 80s, playing a character called Etta. Vengeance on Varos was the episode. We lived in a little cell. All our food was brought down on a, on a trolley. Very strange. And someone else in the Oswald family has a dark secret. I was the voice of the evil Satnav Atmos. Oh, I don't believe this. This is your final destination. You have reached your destination. This is your final destination. I better be careful with the sat nav, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Most impressive. We don't see Atmos returning this Christmas, but we do have a few other classic old foes. We've got a lot of returning monsters in this one. I, I want it to be a, a grandstanding battle for, for the Eleventh Doctor's uh, final moments. It doesn't take just one monster to, to end uh, a Doctor's era. It takes loads of them. And some of them have been upgraded. Or is it downgraded? I could be wrong about this, but I think the idea of wooden Cybermen was possibly mooted before. You know, it's a Cyberman, but he's made of wood. There's something just eye-twisting about it. If it was me that thought of that, uh, I'm very clever. Uh, more likely, someone else in Doctor Who's past is very clever, and uh, I has ever ripped them off. Well, he looks pretty impressive. Nice bit of hand-carved detail there, I think. Hang on. The wooden Cyberman is actually a Cyberwoman. I fitted into the suit perfectly. They decided that they were going to put me in as a, a wooden cyber woman. Yes, we better be very clear about these things. So how different is it to the usual Cyberman slash Cyberwoman? I think the wooden Cyberman is, is probably a little bit more wooden. <laughs> that figures, but I have a question. How do you keep a wooden flame-throwing Cyberman from catching a light? It's not a Christmas cracker joke, don't worry. So that's a secret, I'm afraid. I can't tell you that. The wooden Cyberman is clearly made of uh, fire-resistant wood. Thank you, Stephen. That's an exclusive. You heard it here first. But Stephen's script was to cause some trouble for a certain guest star when it landed on the desk. When my agent sends me a script, I, I often say, well, give it a quick read, darling, just so I can check out that it's not a killer nun. <laughs> this time, when I got um, the script, I knew, look, I knew it was Doctor Who, which is just lovely. It's like, you know, being asked for tea with the Queen. And Tasha Lem has quite a bit of authority too, doesn't she, Orla? Paper mainframe is huge, honey. It's big. <laughs> it's the UN of, the, of space. The UN with a lot more firepower and the UN with teeth. She's one powerful woman who just loves to get her teeth stuck into things. The Doctor included. I think when you go out with someone like Tasha Lem, which he did, you understand that, you know, if you go out with a scorpion, a scorpion will probably have a go and try and bite you every so often, because it's just in its nature. When you go out with one of this race, um, they will probably at some point have a go and try and kill you. So I think it was part of the fun of their relationship was that he knew at any moment that she might produce a stiletto and have a go. 
part of the fun and the flirt was that he would always manage to stop her. So are you just as scary as Tasha Lem in real life, Orla? You'd have to ask my husband. <laughs> I don't know what he'd say to that. Well, I'm sure Orla's a lovely, warm human being. And other members of the Christmas cast are feeling the cosy spirit of the season too. First of all, Matt's just really nice. He's just helpful and just kind. And Barnabal is happy to be best buddies with the Doctor. He really looks up to the Doctor. I think he's just a normal boy. He really sort of connects with the Doctor and understands him. Do you realise how much Barnabal um, means to the Doctor? You're guarding my TARDIS, Barnabal. Are you coming back? Ah, come on. You know me. Are we? Now, here's a kid who makes acting look rather easy, but he did run into some problems getting onto set. On the way up, the driver got lost, so we're stopping all these SAS soldiers, asking them for directions. Filming on an SAS training base does have its advantages, and once he eventually got onto set, he was in for a Christmas treat. There's all the Christmas trees and the Christmas lights, snow. I don't think I'm going to have a better Christmas than this. Nice. Well, we've had snow, a lovely meal, caught up with family and friends, but hang on, it's Doctor Who. It can't be that simple. I know, we need a man who can sprinkle on some Christmas chaos. So it just gives you a nice orange fireball. OK, I think I know what's coming. Christmas special, here we are. Got all the ingredients, it's got snow, big visual explosions. Daleks, an aliens attacking the place. Explosions, with real fireballs. Action, adventure, Cybermen. I mean, it's just epic. And action! Our special effects team have had their work cut out. Well, come on, it wouldn't be Christmas without a bit of explosive action and mayhem. And this Christmas special called for a more explosive ending than we've ever seen before on Doctor Who. For me, and I know for Matt, we wanted the end of the Eleven Doctor to be kind of triumphant. You can't equate regeneration with death, because nobody dies. He doesn't die. But what is frightening for the Doctor, what is alarming for anyone, if you, just, if you were told tomorrow morning you will be somebody else, you will be alive but rewritten, that would be frightening. <laughs> and that's what the Doctor faces each time. He's, got, he's at home in his current persona and his current body, and someone's going to come along and they say, we're going to change everything. We all change. Yes, everything was set to change for the Doctor, and with a new life set to begin, it became a very emotional experience for Matt. I will not forget one line of this. Not one day, not one line, I swear. I will always remember when the doctor was me. I'm not really a, a sort of weepy guy. I just suddenly it all got a bit, I don't know. I don't know what happened to me, to be honest with you. We were going through saying goodbyes. It was yeah. quite funny, because I just noticed as that scene was happening, and I couldn't even look at Matt, I could just I hear. And like the two, like my and your hair, hair was just over here, wasn't it? Because was I looked at you and it was like... further and further down the table. Yeah. And that, it was hard. As the end of filming approached, it was time for Matt and Jenna to hang out for one last time. I feel quite sad, really, to be honest. But all good things come to an end. And, uh, no, I just feel quite sad. The emotion had really started to hit Matt now he was set to leave. But he was happy to put some practice in for his new job, cameraman. And Jenna's a little bit sore, now Matt's embarking on a new career. Yep. You... I left you. ...dumped me. <gasps> Never. What are you going to miss most about me? Oh. Apart from my looks. Um, I'm, I'm just going to miss the, the daily abuse. The daily abuse? Yeah. Matt, can we have the camera back? Yes, thanks, phew. Stick to the day job. Daily abuse, apparently. This is what I've had to deal with. Literally, she will not take her arms off me. It's quite clingy today. I'm talking every day. I've been like, Jenna. Morning. No, I'm going to miss you too, mate. It's clear that Matt and Jenna get on but it was eventually time for friends to say goodbye. So thank you so much, Jenna, and another round of applause. Yes!
Well, in this second, we've, yeah. just, we've just wrapped on Jenna, just on the last scene between Jenna and Matt. Yeah. yeah no, it's a really emotional day because it's the end of the Christmas special, it's the end of the 11th Doctor, it's my last day here. We've just said goodbye to Jenna. So, yeah, it's a really emotional day. Part of me genuinely feels that I sort of wish we'd had another go at it, another year. So I think we've really come on and sort of evolved. It is really sad. Shame, yeah. We've we've had a good time making it. It's been a real fun episode to make. Nice. All right, here we go. Snap, snap. Uh, one of the pains of this, it does feel like the end of a, of an era. And I don't just mean the fictional era of the show, I mean the real life human era of Matt and I looking at each other. And nearly five years ago, I was taking off from Russell, he was taking off from David. And the look in our faces was, uh, we, we, we can't win. Nobody thinks we're going to, and it's this is going to be terrible. <laughs> so all these years later, it worked. My god, it worked. I'm going to miss everyone. Moth, <laughs> come stand with me. <laughs> all right. This is Stephen Moffat. Who, uh, what is it you do? I never really worked it out. Oh. But they allow me in, and that's yeah. definitely quite exciting. I just see him sort of roaming around, looking confused. Matt's very last photo call in the TARDIS was a time for some laughs with the crew, but it couldn't put off the inevitable. Glad I don't have two hearts, because they'd be both breaking, breaking at the moment. Um, <clears throat> I have a complaint against time travel I would like uh, today not to have arrived. Everybody, the biggest round of applause for the best and bravest. Time and there was one last amazing Christmas present for Matt to cherish. Thank you. Uh, yes. <laughs> Everyone that was watched Doc 2 and supported number 11, this is it. This is the end. And uh, you've been amazing. I, I feel quite emotional. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it may be the end for Doctor Number 11, but just like the spirit of Christmas itself, the Doctor will always be with us. Just one question. Do you happen to know how to fly this thing? Well, you better get used to it quickly, Doctor. Merry Christmas and get yourselves ready for a happy new era. Oh!